Hi there, it's Sandra. A big welcome if you're new and a huge thank you to all of my current viewers and subscribers. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you could hit that red button and stick around a while. Today's projects are all about quick, easy, and stunning home decor DIYs for spring. So let's get going. I'm starting off with this birdhouse sort of thing. I created this a while ago, but all you need to do is grab a birdhouse shape, whether it's from Hobby Lobby or Dollar Tree, wherever, and then glue a box onto the back of it. And that's basically what I did, but I just created my own. If you wanted to add more details like a roof line like I did, you just grab some little square pieces. You can even use the tumbling tower blocks. This was white and it was distressed with some black. I'm just giving it a fresh coat of white paint. I love using a sage green color for some of my spring projects. So that's what I'm using here. It was a color that I kind of mixed up together. I took some green, I took some gray and some white, mixed it together in my jar. And that's the color I'm using for this project. I'm going to do the roof line and I'm also going to do the box border at the bottom there that sticks out a little bit just to give it a little bit more interest. Then I'm going to paint a section down at the bottom to look like the box comes all the way around to the front. The first way I'm going to be customizing this birdhouse is using tissue paper decoupage. What I do is I take a piece of tissue paper that I've cut down to size, and this is gift wrap tissue paper from the dollar store. It's white, and I make sure to always print with the shiny side down. I use painter's tape to attach the tissue paper to my cardstock, which is what I'm going to feed through my printer. What I did is I grabbed these images from Creative Fabrica. You guys know I love that site, so if you haven't checked them out, you've got to head down to my description box and click on the link, get over there, and and look for some beautiful designs. I resized the images, I took whichever ones I needed, and then I printed them out with the tissue paper. Now I'm gonna cut them out and then decoupage them onto my project. Super simple, but a really wonderful way to be able to customize and make your project one of a kind. Using a small brush, I place Mod Podge down first, and then I lay my little tissue paper printable on top, tap it down with my finger so I don't get too many smudges, make sure that it's adhered, and then I'll go over it again with a really light coat of Mod Podge to seal it in. I ended up using all of the little images that I printed off, but if I don't use all of them, I have a folder that I will place them into, and then I can use them for different projects down the road. It took me a little bit to figure out what I wanted to do with the green portion of this project. And I didn't want to add any ribbons or anything. I wanted to keep it really nice, classic and simple. So I have a little bit of water in this little Dixie cup and I'm adding some white paint. I want to have a diluted paint mixture that's sort of the consistency of milk. And then I'm going to be able to tap that on and give these green portions of the birdhouse a little bit of dots and splatter. And that just makes it look really, really cute. I used a piece of paper just to cover up the rest of the birdhouse that I didn't want any splatters on. And then I just simply take my fan brush, I dip it into the paint, wipe off the excess, and then splatter it just by hitting it a little bit. And this is a technique that works really well for me. I've tried using the toothbrush technique before and some other ideas and they just never worked. So I tried this when I saw it from a different crafter here on YouTube. She was using it all the time and I decided to give it a shot and I love this technique now. For this project, I'm going to do something I have never tried before. The first thing I'm doing is just painting this two by four that has been cut into a house shape, just something I had in my stash. And I love to repurpose things when I'm done decorating with them and just change things up for every season. So it's just going to get a couple of coats of white chalk paint. 
got this stencil here that I just cut out a piece from actually a couple of pieces from the larger portion of the stencil. And I'm going to use some painter's tape just to hold it in place. I'm going to be using wood filler because that's what I had on hand. Normally you could use some caulk, you could use some drywall compound, whatever you happen to have on hand. I know that the Dollar Tree sometimes carries little containers, so definitely grab whatever you can. I'm going to squeeze a bunch of it out onto this piece of paper just because that's going to make it easier for me to access. What you're going to do is just take a decent amount on your paint scraper or your little wood piece like I'm using here, and you're going to very gently just start filling in the stencil. And you want this to be quite thick on top of the stencil. I would say, I don't know, it's hard to say, probably a couple of millimeters thick at least because you want to have that raised texture once you lift up the stencil. You also want to make sure that it's really nice and smooth and that it is sticking onto your project underneath. So you've got to give the first little bit quite a bit of pressure and then you can go over it and create some layers. That's what I did. I just found that worked best for me. Once it's all filled in the way you like it, you're very gently and slowly going to peel off that stencil. And then if there's any raised edges, you can very gently just tap them down with your finger. You can also scrape off any of the excess and that can be used for the next stencil. I liked to use two clean ones or three clean ones. So I had multiples of this, but if you don't, what I would suggest is taking your stencil over to the sink, giving it a nice clean, drying it really, really well, and then you can continue to use it for the next time. I did this process three times on this piece of wood, and I wanted to show you here when I pulled off this second stencil, the stem came with it. So I had not applied enough pressure for the wood filler to actually stick to the flower itself. Really simple fix. Literally, all you need to do is very carefully just place it back down on top of the wood filler that you've already got there. You can see me being really kind of hesitant to see if I'm going to be able to do that, but I do end up putting it back down and then filling it again and giving it a little bit of extra pressure to make sure that the stem stays put. Now, this one did give me some problems. So even though I was able to add some more of the wood filler, it still kind of was a little bumpy, but no problem. I just used my finger and very gently smoothed it out. Once you're done with this, then walk away from it. Let it dry overnight and then you'll be guaranteed that you're not going to lose any of the pieces. I'm going to now just give it a couple of coats of white chalk paint just so it is the same color as the background. But if this is not your cup of tea, you could definitely take some acrylic paints or chalk paints and do the flowers some pretty pinks or some pastel shades, do some sage green on the leaves and the stems. I think that would look beautiful too. Once this is dry, I'm going to take a chip brush and a little bit of black paint just on the edge and I'm going to give it some distressing. I started off this project with another one of these two by fours cut into a house shape and I painted it the sage green color that I used on the birdhouse in the first project. Then I went to my printer, I went on to Pixabay and I found some textured papers that I could print off on my printer. I like creating my own scrapbook paper simply because when you go to the craft stores, I never find what I want. They're always really expensive, like sometimes here in Canada, probably 
a dollar twenty five, a dollar fifty, sometimes two dollars for one twelve by twelve sheet. I have a printer. I have lots of ink, so I just do it that way. I printed these pieces out on sketchbook paper because I just go to the dollar store. I I grab an eight by 11 or eight and a half by 11 sketchbook paper. It is usually a little bit of an off white color. That's okay with me too. And it is a little bit thicker almost like cardstock, but not quite. And it's perfect for creating your own scrapbook paper. So as I was babbling, I'm sure you were watching, right? You were watching. I am creating some house shapes and each of them are going to be a little bit smaller, probably not quite a quarter of an inch, but a little bit smaller so you can see the paper from underneath. And this is a really fun and simple way to create a beautiful high-end looking project with different types of paper that coordinate in colors. So I have four sheets of scrapbook paper. I've got the wood grain. I've got the little flower texture one. I've got a very soft pink buffalo check and then this final sage green color. I'm going to be cutting the green one down a little bit more because I want to be able to see some of that floral paper. I thought that was just so pretty. Since I got all of these papers on Pixabay, which is a totally free site, I'll have them listed in my website as free printables in the spring folder. I'm just using a glue stick and I'm going to go ahead and just layer each of these pieces on and you'll see that they slowly get smaller each time I put them on. It's very subtle, but it looks really pretty. Finally, I'm going to be adding this last one and then the little green one is going to go in the center because I have some little embellishments that I want to add to this piece. I'm just taking a little fine tipped black marker and because the flower paper has some little black speckles in it, I thought it would be cute to do some little dots around the edges of the green paper. So I'm just gonna continue to do that all the way around. This is some lamb's ear and I wanted to use this color because it's sort of a sage color and it blended really nicely in with the green, but I only had these larger leaves. So just cutting them down made it so much better. I added some of these soft pink cherry blossoms, the little sage leaves that I added, some little white florals too, and I really think this turned out pretty. It screams spring without saying a word. I saw this cute little sign at the Dollar Tree and I couldn't resist picking it up, although I only wanted to use three of the four little houses. So I very carefully twisted the last one off and now they're going to get a coat of black chalk paint. Just one will do the trick, but I'm going to do the beads, the back, the front, the bottom, everything. I went back to my computer and I always use Google Drawings to create my printables. And I created these three sweet printables. Again, I used some images from Pixabay that were free and then I added some word art to say home, tweet, home. This will also be available on my website as a free printable for you. I went back to my computer and I always use Google Drawings to create my printables. If this is something you would like me to show you in a video, please let me know down in the comments because I do this a lot. And if you want to learn how it's done, I'd be more than happy to share it with you. This will also be available as a free printable on my website. I'm going to cut these down just a little bit smaller than the actual little house shape so you see a little bit of the black peeking through. I printed these out on white cardstock, so it's a really nice stiff paper. And I'm taking the edge of my scissor blade and I'm just kind of roughing it up a little bit so it looks a little bit more distressed.
I have one of these little ink brushes and I'm putting it into my ink pad and I'm just going to be distressing the edges a little bit. Now on the first one, I went a little heavy because I had not used this type of little brush before and it got a little gray. So I ended up having to do everything with a gray because I didn't want to redo everything. So I'm just going to go over it as you can see me doing here just really lightly just to give it more of an aged look. I'm just using a glue stick again and I'll glue all of the papers right onto the little houses. And for the last little bit of distressing, I'm going to take an emery board and just go over the edges of the paper as well as the edge of the houses and bring back some of that natural wood look. This is another little birdhouse that I'm repurposing. I had the front of the birdhouse. I think I got that from the Dollar Tree at one point. I think it was a little hanging thing. This one I also glued just a little one of their wooden cubes to the back of it. And it had been stained or painted this burnt umber with a little bit of a whitewash on top. So I'm going to just repurpose this as well. Something really simple to do. If you've got decor that you're tired of or you want to change it up, then simply just grab it and repurpose it to something different. I'm using some of these self-stick stencils that you can get from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to put them all over this little birdhouse. I'm using a color called parchment, which is sort of a creamy white color, and I'm just going to make sure that some of my stencils aren't too perfect. I like it when the little flowers fall off the edge of my project, so that's what I'm going to do, and I'll cut up some of them that I need smaller and I'll just put them back on when I'm done and I'll be able to use them for a different project down the road. This was such an easy and simple project and it has such a stunning look to it. I really love how this one turned out. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. I hope you got a little bit of inspiration to take something old and create something new for spring. Make sure you do all the things. Hit that subscribe button, the like button, and the notification bell. And if you like this video and there's someone else that you think might enjoy it, please share it with them. See you in the next one.